Okay, so I want to start seeing what's happened here. Incidentally, we use de Mauvais, de Mauvais, however you say it, theorem to calculate z squared when z was 1 plus i. It was obviously easy to do it as foiling. Uh, what, what would be the actual advantage? Well, when you're taking a square or a cube, that's going to be pretty fast. Incidentally, I want to track and see what happens with, with this. Right. What if you did it to the 50th power? So let's see, here's one, two, I'll make this big enough to see the three. Uh, one, two, three. We may need more on this. So what do we have? We have one plus i. That will be right here. This is one plus i. And I might as well use some color here. So this is this one thought of as a vector right here. And here's our little triangle. We know that this angle is pi over 4. So what happened when we did this? So we started off with z is equal to 1 plus i. We figured out that z squared was 2i, which is equal to what? Uh, let's go to our chart. Well, 2i is going to be right here. This is 0 plus 2i, or just good old-fashioned 2i. This looks like this. And here, theta is pi over 2. Let's try and do this. Let's see. Let's take it to the fourth power. Okay, so you could still do this. Uh, if z equals 1 plus i, you could do this by foiling it out a couple times. It wouldn't be a lot of fun, but it wouldn't be hard. I claim this is easier. Remember, this is this also the same as the square root of 2, e to the i, pi over 4. So the square root of 2, incidentally, this is really bad notation, especially as you get to calculus. This is, the square root of 2 is 2 to the 1 half, e to the i, pi over 4, to the fourth power. Um, a, b to the m is a, m, b, m. Right, so this 4 hits here, and it hits here. This is going to be 2 to the 1 half times 4 times e to the i pi over 4 times 4. 2 to the 1 half, this is going to be 2 to the 1 half times 4 is 2 to the 2. This is 4 times e to the i pi. This is, uh, and I guess I'll go down here so I have room. This is going to be 4 times cosine pi plus i sine pi. Sine of pi is 0, cosine of pi is negative 1. This is negative 4. And I was wise to keep this out of the way because it's still not going to be completely out of the way. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is the point negative 4 plus 0 i. And let me put a little color on this. This is what happened here. Okay, so let's take a look at this picture. We started off with z here in its original incarnation. We squared it, and it obviously it ex length extended by what we would expect it to, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, and its angle was double. And similarly for this, the angle here is four times of what the original is. Um, <laughs> so when I started out doing this, I was thinking this would look more spectacular than it does, but... It's very important to know how to manipulate these things. And also, I wanted you to see practically that knowing this is worthwhile because what if I was going to say, what z to the 40th power? You really don't want to do, figure out what z to the 40th power is by hand. Okay, so we're going to do one more thing on this, and then I actually am going to go to lunch and we'll shoot tomorrow. Remember... So we, we need to take roots of things as well. So remember, we can write this uh, z is equal to r e to the i theta plus 2k pi, right? Where k is some integer. Because, once again, sine and cosine are periodic with 2 pi. What is the nth root of this, right? We just did the n's, what's the n's? Well, that'd be this to the 1 over n. So, once again, manipulating the exponents correctly, 
This is r to the 1 over n, e to the i, theta plus 2k pi divided by n. And here's the deal. Uh, n is some number. We already know this. What do we arrange k through? Well, k is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 to the n minus 1. Because once k is n again, then you just, the whole thing is going to cycle over again. Right? Um, Okay, so we should probably make some kind of computation. Let me see if I have those. Oh, oh, what I should do is show what this is then. This is r to the 1 over n cosine uh, theta plus 2k pi over n plus i sine theta plus 2k pi over n. This is very great for figuring some stuff out. Let's uh, move on. Uh, how much time do we have, Mr. Two P minutes. Two minutes. Let's figure Sorry, out what? Sorry, three minutes. Three minutes. If z equals one plus i, and the reason... Mm -hmm. So if we have z equals one plus i, we know we wrote that as the square root of two, which I'm going to write as two to the one half, e to the i pi over four, but I can add the two k pi to that, right, which I will. And so if we're going to take the one half, we're taking the square root of this, so this will equal this. Uh, two to the one half to the one half is two to the one fourth times e to the i pi over four plus two k pi. Uh, this will be e to the i pi over four plus two k pi over uh, two, right? where k is going to be 0 or 1. When k is 0, we're going to end up with 2 and 1 to the 1 fourth, e to the i pi over 8, right? That's k is 0. It killed off this, and pi over 4 divided by 2. And when k is 1, we're going to have 2 and 1, and 2 to the 1 fourth, e to the i. Uh, so what, when k is 1, that's going to be pi over 4 plus 2 pi all over 2. This obviously needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, we got this. Pi over 4 plus 2 pi. This is the same as pi plus 8 pi over 4. This is the same as 9 pi over 4. And then we're dividing that by 2. So this is 2 to the 1 fourth. Uh, e to the i. What do we have? 9 pi eighths. Okay, and these are our two solutions here. And you'll notice, uh, if you look where these are, pi eighths, 9 pi eighths, these are different solutions. They lie in different places. And I think, okay, let's convert this one back because we're running out of time. So this is going to be 2 to the 1 fourth times. Cosine pi over 8 plus i sine pi over 8. And these are going to end up being some numbers. Cosine of pi over 8 doesn't come out nice and cleanly, and neither does sine pi over 8. But we're going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to talk more about uh, exponentiation and taking roots. But I'd like to leave you with this. Remember, in, in real number theory, 3 squared is 3 times 3, right? Um, in complex numbers, what does i to the i equal. If you, what does it mean to exponentiate by complex numbers? The answer is really cool, and I will show you tomorrow. See you.